Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible me. I am so happy Jesus loved me. He come got me buku sons ago and bought me out of that land of Egypt, out of that house of bondage, and I asked him to bless me and help me have no other cause to me. So here's the holy temperance time for our announcement. I'm not going to be done by the First Community Church. Mother Evangelist, let's all get it with the heart of Amen. Amen and praise the Lord. And good afternoon, everyone here at 519 South Pearl Street. Amen. And to our Facebook audience, amen, this afternoon. Amen. We thank and praise God for another beautiful day. Amen. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Amen. Our announcements are as follows. Amen. This coming Tuesday. Amen. Our noonday prayer. Amen. We'll be here at the church. Amen. And we're going to be praying, amen, for backsliders, for peace, for families, amen, for deliverance from uh, illicit drugs. If you're on drugs, you know, to be broken, amen, and for sickness, amen, for financial breakthroughs, amen, hallelujah, right. amen, all those ones that are tearing for the Holy Ghost, amen, you can get it, amen, hallelujah, and now is the time, amen, in these last and evil days, amen, in Jesus' name, and the exhorter will be yours truly. Amen. On this Tuesday coming, the Lord say the same. Amen. And also um, on that fourth Friday night, amen, um, that yours truly will also be the speaker, amen, for that on our missionary night. Amen. And on the 15th, amen, of November is our Bible study. Amen. We have that on Zoom. And that uh, passcode and ID number is 613-459-8540. And the passcode is the number one, capital P, small t, small a, a capital B, and a capital W. Amen. And that will be the same passcode and ID number for our Friday night services. Amen. Hallelujah. And also, um, about 15, about, maybe about tomorrow, or Tuesday, all that's going to our state meeting. Amen. It's going to be in uh, Seguin, Texas. Amen. At Refuge 3. Amen. It's time for us to get in our... our money for that amen and if we can we can do that today or even you know first thing tomorrow amen so they can get a count of how many is going to be there amen and participating in our state day amen also on november the 18th uh, that's our diocese meeting amen and uh, the registration package and everything is all in our bulletin so you can register and do all that thing if you're going to be there or not but we just believe that you know if you, do, if you don't even come you still have to pay your registration fee amen hallelujah glory to god so we just thank and praise god for that in jesus name and our holy temple values are we have to reverence the house of god amen have respect for one another saints of god and be supportive of one another amen and support the ministry of salvation amen and to be faithful in our stewardship so we thank and praise God for that in Jesus' name. Um, so those are all of our announcements. And if you want to be a blessing, amen, hallelujah, to this ministry, amen, you can do it by giving to Giftify, Holy Temple of our Lord Jesus Christ, 519 South Pearl Street. Or you can do it cash out the dollar sign, Holy Temple 519. And we will be greatly appreciated in Jesus' name. Amen. So you all continue to pray for us in Jesus' name. This morning, uh, just so many songs coming to my mind, and I need to write them down. And uh, but just a few minutes ago, this song dropped in my spirit. Amen, hallelujah, and I thank God, amen, for this song. It's an old song, amen. Some of you might be know, you know, it's nothing, you know, nothing new, amen. But it's an old song. You all pray for me, amen. This is just the way that I'm feeling this morning. That things is going on, you know, people need to be saved, amen. Hallelujah, the backsliders, amen. And we, some of us need to be reclaimed, amen. Hallelujah. And some of us need a breakthrough. But whatever it is, amen, we know that we can get it. God's got everything that we need. Hallelujah. You all pray for me in Jesus' name. Oh, let a revival break out in me. Oh, let a revival 
our drama is back, yeah. and we thank God for him. Amen. As the song say, oh, let a revival break out in us. Oh, Lord, we need it. I'm saying me, and I can't talk for nobody but myself. Amen. We need it. I need it. Amen. Oh, let a revival break out in us. Amen. In Jesus' name. At this time, I'm going to turn the part of service back into the hands of our system pastor, Ellen Norma Williams. Amen. Let him come in Jesus' name. Let us thank God for him. Amen. Praise the Lord once again. Praise the Son of the Lord, through the Father, and through the First, in Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 14, say, How can they hear without preaching? And how can they preach except to be saved? And it went on in, in, in Romans 10, 17, say, Faith cometh by hearing, yes. to hear the word. So that's what we're going to hear the word this morning. Bible pastor, Amen. Bishop William Jesus. Let's all read him with a hearty Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord again, and that was great to hear that song, Let a Revival, amen, break out of me, yes. amen, that is great, speaking individually, amen, that we need the revival, amen, in our souls, not just on one occasion, Hallelujah. amen, but every day, we need to be revived, amen, amen. so again, we're giving honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to the household of faith, those that are here, and with those that are streaming by way of Facebook. We thank God for you. Yes. Amen. We are so grateful for the wondrous work that our God has done and the yes. wondrous work that he is doing. Amen. That's why we use the phrase, what a mighty God we serve, because he is mighty. Amen. Magnificent and great. Amen. And above all, he is worthy to be praised. As David said on one occasion, let everything that hath breath, breath, amen, praise the Lord. Yes, Lord, amen, for the life that we have, for the breath that we breathe, for the substance that we consume, for the strength of our bodies, for the strength of our minds, amen, we can't help but to praise him, amen, amen, amen. it's good to be back, amen, uh, behind the pulpit one more time, yes. amen, the Lord has been good to me. Amen. As you may note, my voice is not 100%, but it's enough. Amen. Remember the apostle of Region 11, uh, former apostle of Region 11, Amen. Bishop Stedman, always said, use what you got. Amen. amen. And that's what we are endeavoring today, use what we have. Amen. Our scripture today is coming from Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 5 and verse 6. Again, that is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Amen. You may stand for the reading of the word. Amen. And our system has to share those segments of scriptures. Amen. This morning with us. <clears throat> Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. You may be seated, and we thank God again. Amen. For the reader, but more importantly, for the word. And as David shared with us, thy word have I hidden in my heart. Reason why? That I might not sin against thee. Amen. We're endeavoring to use for a thought this morning this morning, but it's really this afternoon, amen, from uh, those two passages of scripture from Proverbs, amen, reliance on God with absolute trust and conviction, mm -hmm. reliance on God with absolute trust and conviction. Here in Proverbs, it's a source of comfort during difficult times or during difficult seasons because we have heard the phrase trouble don't last always, but we are endeavoring to endure until our season come or until our end come. So as David said, trust in the Lord. Yes, it reminds us that God is still in control even when things seem out of control. God 
is still in control. And if we follow his lead, if we follow his word, amen, he will be with us as we go through our trials and through our tribulations. For our ultimate goal is to hear our great God say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. We want to have, amen, our bowl with him. That's why we don't mind suffering down here because they that the godly shall suffer persecution. So we are prepared to suffer the indignation, amen, that we might encounter, amen, that we might pave our way, amen, to heaven, working out our own soul salvation with fear, amen, and with trembling, amen. That word trust here implies both the decision to trust God, but also the commitment to create a habit of trusting God. Amen. Not just a one-time occurrence, but a habit. Something that is done habitually. Amen. For the purpose of pleasing God and complying with his will and complying with his word. Amen. That all of those things that prevents us or hinders us from doing his will will be pushed aside and we lay aside the weights and sin that do so easily beset us. Yes, it's a decision that we all must make. From the time of the opening of our eyes in the morning to the time we close our eyes at night, we must make that decision. I'm going to trust in the Lord. And I'm going to wait on him. Job declared, I'm going to wait until my change comes. So every decision, amen, that we make should be a decision, amen, of trusting God. Hallelujah. Of trusting our God. Amen. This isn't just a choice in our head, but it's action in our lives. Amen. We're acting out or living out, amen, our decision, living out our choice to trust God. It's an absolute fact that I believe the Lord. It's an absolute fact that I love the Lord. It's an absolute fact that the Lord is my help. The Lord is my people. So we have actively chosen, amen, daily to say, Lord, I trust you. Amen. Every decision that I make, Lord, I trust you. Every thought that formulates in my mind, Lord, I want it to come from you. Amen. That I may be led by you. Amen. They said the word I've hidden in my heart. Amen. And my heart describes the extent to which we are able to trust God. It comes from the core of us, the center of us. This word in, in indicates that, amen, it is the center of our being. In other words, we ought to trust God with our whole heart. It's not a part-time relationship. Amen. Our whole heart is invested in the Word of God. Our whole heart is invested in everything that God requires of us. We're not going to do this thing halfway or half-stepping. We're going to do it all the way. I'm going all the way with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, yeah, because absolutely I trust Him. There's a doubt within my mind that I trust in. Throughout everything we are and everything that we will ever be, there is no exception. We will trust in the Lord. I said with everything that we are and everything that we will ever be, we will trust in the Lord. There are no exceptions in trusting God. Hearts are heavy, trust the Lord. Amen. You're weighted down in trouble, trust the Lord. Sickness in your body, trust the Lord. Amen. The enemies are encroaching upon you. Trust the Lord. Neighbors can't get along with one another. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. He knows how to work it out. Yes, Amen. Can he work it out? Yes, he can work it out. <clears throat> Trusting in the Lord with our whole heart means that you have placed your hope, your trust for everything in the hands of the Lord. It's not you, but God. Nothing else matters. It's the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For him I live, and for him I die. I die daily. Amen. Those things, amen, that prevent me from being what God wants me to be. Yes, trusting in God means being wholeheartedly, amen, confident in all of God's attributes and all of God's character and all that he is. There's nothing too hard for our God. Amen. I say there's nothing too hard Father God, he's still that mountain mover. Amen. From yesteryears to today, Father, he is still that heart fixer. And above all, he's still that soul saver. Amen. If you want to make it to heaven, amen, you got to have Jesus in your life. Amen. 
It means if you want to make it to heaven, you got to be steadfast and unmovable. If you want to go to heaven, you got to be absolutely convinced and committed to living according to his every word. Not part-time, but full-time. When we are in, in need of employment, part-time will do some time, but we want a full-time job because a full-time job relegates itself into full-time pay with extra benefits. Like hospitalization and, 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 and <laughs> dentistry, thank you, Jesus. And other benefits that come along, amen, having a full-time job. And when you have a full-time relationship with God, oh, what benefits are available, amen, unto you. It means knowing he will do what he said. It's knowing he will do, amen, what he had never done before in your life. It means that you can trust what he said because his character is true. God is love. Thank you, Jesus. By this you shall know that, by this they shall know that you are my disciples. If you have love one for another. But trust goes hand in hand with faith because without faith it is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Faith is that assurance, amen, that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that assurance that, yeah, Lord, everything that we do is, is based upon your word. It's based upon our hope in you. Thank you, Jesus. Our everlasting God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, trust. He's still rooted in and flows from our faith and knowledge of God. Study to show thyself approved under God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I said trust is, is rooted in, at it flows out of the faith that you have and the knowledge that you've gained about God. Yes, from your experience, you know who he is. Amen. He has time and time again kicked you up out of the muck and the mud clay. He's time and time again fought your battle. Amen. And won. Because there's always victory in Jesus. Time and time again, the problem that you could not resolve, God resolved those problems for you. You have an experience with him. You have a relationship with him. Absolutely. Yes, I will not doubt you, Lord. Absolutely. I'm going to hold on. If I'm holding by my fingernail, Lord, I'm going to hold on to your unchanging hand. Yes. yes, and we know that faith cometh by hearing, as we said earlier, and hearing by the word of God. And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach? Yes. Except they be sent. Trusting in God. Amen. If faith put in action, is that right? Trusting in God, amen, is walking by his word. Not just talking about him, but walking about what you're saying about God. What God has already said. He's real, real to me. Trusting in God. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Is that faith that you have put into action. Not just saying on the sideline, but it's put into action. Yes, and then we talk about <laughs> our conviction, amen, which is that strong belief or that persuasion based upon the word of God that you believe in. You've heard it, Lord Jesus, and you've experienced it, that word, that word of God that said, will not change. Heaven and earth will pass away before one yacht or one tilt of his word, amen, shall fail. I have complete co confidence, con complete conviction in God's word. It's also the state of being convinced and confident that something is true. If anything is true, it is the word of God. Amen. If anything is true, it is the word of God. And John said, he shall know the truth Amen. and the truth shall make yes. you free. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. The truth is not an advertisement. Then. It is the word of God, because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and that word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and of the only they got another bottle, full of grace and what? And truth. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, you have a conviction. And as the results of that conviction, your exposure and admission, amen, that I was wrong. Jesus is right. I was weak, 
Jesus is strong. Yes, yes. Through him I am strong. strong. Not my physical strength, but spiritually I am strong because it's God that is fighting the battle yes. and not me. Thank you, Jesus. It also means, amen, we are defending what we believe in. I am convinced that I'm standing fast on the word of God. I shall not be moved. I said I shall not be moved. But hold on to him and his unchanging hand. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. This is true and it's right. Amen. You must be convinced. Amen. You must have that mindset. I'm going to stand. I'm going to hold on to God. Absolutely, praise God. I'm going to trust on him. Trust in him. Amen. My conviction shall not fail. Amen. Even in times of distress, I'm going to trust my God. Yeah, basically this passage of scripture encourage us to put our trust in the many other scriptures. In the Lord, our trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not in man, not in our own knowledge and wisdom, but in the word of God. We have a hiding place. Thank you, Jesus. It implies that you're living in complete reliance, amen, and confidence in God. Thank you, Jesus. When you can't get this done, God can do it for you. Amen. When man said it's all over, God said it's just beginning. Amen. When you put your trust in him. It is a fact that God loves us. It is a fact that God cares for us. Because John said, or oh, the word of God said, God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. And that's love. And greater love is no man than this than a man will lay down his life for a friend. Jesus, he did just that for you. And when you realize, praise God, that the Lord Jesus Christ, yeah, watches over you as you sleep and slumber, watches over you as you travel over the dangerous highway, watches over you as you engage in this and that, oh, because yeah. he is your God. And he will lead you, praise God, wherever he needs to lead you, if you're willing to follow, follow. the Lord Jesus Christ. Did not he say the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous? And his ears are open unto their cry. Yes, we talk more about faith because without it, it is impossible, amen, to please God. Amen, faith is following God, amen, whose audible voice you have heard. The wind has blown, he's been certain these thoughts into your mind, but yet to hear his voice, yet you're following him. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that right? A voice that you have never heard. Thank you. An audible voice, that's right, that you've never heard. That's faith. Faith is loving and obeying. Amen. A Savior whose wonderful face you have yet to see. But one day we shall see him just as he is. That's faith. Yes, faith is obeying the word of God. Amen. That is being ridiculed. Amen. That is being misunderstood. That is being attacked left and right and still holding on to it. That's faith. When everybody seems to be doubting that it is the word of God, that's faith when you hold on to it in spite of all. Well, the majority is going because God doesn't work by majority. He worked by his word. It might be just one or two, but he worked by his word. Did not he say there were two or three that gathered together in his land that he would be there in the midst of He didn't say, well, 500 are gathered together. But just that one number, that two or three, if I have their mind on serving God, he's there in the midst of all. Faith is waiting on the return of the Lord Jesus Christ when you don't know the day nor the hour. You don't know the season, but he's coming. He's coming like a thief in the night, and you have the faith to believe that and wait on that. Lord, I'm waiting for you. I know you're coming. I said, I know you're coming. Yes, sir. You may not come while I am alive, but I know you're coming. Mm -hmm. And you're coming back for ready people, whether they're dead or alive. I know you're coming. That's my belief. That's my faith. Thank you, Jesus. Do you have that kind of faith? Waiting on God. Trusting in God. Having the strong conviction about what you believe in God. 
Faith is planning to have your abode in heaven, a place you've never been. Thank you, Jesus. In most normal circumstances, before anyone invests in something, they have to examine it to see whether it is worth purchasing or worth getting involved with it. But you haven't been there, amen, to search the grounds of heaven. You've heard it and you believe that there is a heaven and there is a hell. Isn't that right? Thank you, Jesus. And your abode is to be there eternally. Amen. When you get there, you can't say, well, I don't like the size. I don't like the look. I don't like the atmosphere. They want to change your mind. Heaven belongs to me. And heaven is a righteous place. Heaven is a holy place. There's no sin or the thought of sin in heaven. Faith is holding on to God's unchanging hand in spite of your circumstances. In spite of life's challenges. In spite of the pain that you endure, in spite of the trouble that you encounter, yes, it's all about your faith. It's all about your trust. It's all about your confidence. Your trust, your reliance, yes, in your God. You believe that he'll make a way for him. Yes, he may not come when you want him, but he'll show up. And when he shows up, he is on time. Amen. When you keep putting your faith and trust in him. Yeah, don't let a day go by. Don't let a moment go by without having a talk with Jesus. Having a conversation with him. Tell him all about your troubles. Tell him all about your experience. Tell him about your joys. Thank God. Amen. Just don't let a day go by without having his life or having his presence. Amen. Being experienced in your life. Remember the old saying she used to say, and they ought to be able to say it in, the, in this day and time too. I can feel it. In my hand. Hallelujah. They don't say that much today. Maybe they can't feel him. I can feel him in my feet. Yeah. So not just in the building here. And even in your home, you can feel the spirit of God moving upon you. Sometimes you can't help but to shout glory. Hallelujah. People may think you're mad or going insane when the spirit of God moves upon you. Amen. Let them talk about you. The more they talk about you, the more you're going to praise his name. Thank you, Jesus. You are unique. You are special people. You belong to God, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Amen. God bought you with a price. Amen. You're healed. You belong to him. Thank you, Jesus. You belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. See his love for you. See what he does for you. Not because of you being deserving of it, but because of his love for you. John said, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. But this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith. Note again, even our faith. Because without faith, you will not be able to please God. When you have faith in the working of God, amen, you become humble. You become, amen, relying on him as a child. You become totally trusting in him, knowing that the power of God will flow through you mightily. You can feel that burning spirit, amen, moving through your life. Amen. The life of our faith completely trust us and totally depend upon the Lord Jesus Christ. That he will do everything that his words say that he will do. Our faith in believing in God who appeared, amen, counterproductive sometimes. Amen. If you look at Moses, praise God. When he called, God called him out, amen, he was that man that murdered, amen, an Egyptian, praise God. And had to run for his life. Amen. And God had a way of getting in touch with him. Amen. And did it through a burning bush. And God called him and gave him a mission. Amen. And going back down to Egypt from where he came. Amen. And delivered his people. He heard their cry. Amen. It looks like when Moses, amen, got, got down to Egypt. 
He should have had victory. Amen. On the first occasion uh, when he encountered Pharaoh. Uh, amen. That should have been it. Praise God. Uh, but God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Uh, not only one time, uh, but nine consecutive times uh, that it didn't go. Uh, could you imagine Moses? Uh, amen. Could have had that mind. Uh, he didn't do it the first time. Uh, he didn't do it the second time. Uh, how long must I wait uh, for victory? Uh, for the words that they uh, that wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. Mount up and bring that in evil. Run and not be weary. Walk and not faint. Moses did not flinch. Amen. When his word was counterproductive. Yeah, as we look at him. For our God to move when we want him to move. But it doesn't move at our word. It doesn't move at our thought. But oh, his own plan. Amen. God works out. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Many of us would have given up if God said it and did not happen then. We have a tendency to fall by the wayside or even give up. But we must be like Moses, trusting in that word. It's not going to fail. He's going to show up and show up on time. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to see rejection. It's hard to view it as being a failure. But there's no failure in God. Let me remind you again. There's no failure in God. God. Hard and Pharaoh's heart. God wanted to prove to the Egyptian that there is only one God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. And he told Moses, tell Israel, I am that I am. There's no other like me. Like Moses did not flinch, did not doubt, did not give up. Even when the Israelite was against him, good God Almighty, he was truly convinced. He was truly convicted. I've got to stand on the word. If nobody follows me, I've got to stand on the word. If no one believes it, I've got to preach the word. In season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exalt with all long suffering. Isn't that right? We are greatly depending on God because He is a mighty God. There are so many benefits of being a child of God. Or they said in younger days, I'm on the Lord's side. And it makes me mighty glad to be on the Lord's side. People that right. You can even remember David. Uh, and Israel, thank you, Jesus. Little old David uh, was ready to go out, uh, amen, and do battle. Uh, he saw a giant uh, that could be defeated uh, in the name of the law. Uh, but Israel saw a giant uh, that they could not conquer. Uh, look on the law. Uh, I said, look on the law. Uh, won't he make a way for you? Uh, you have to lose trust. Uh, and have a new conviction uh, in God. Uh, you can experience uh, unlimited blessings. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, Jesus said unto him, uh, If thou canst believe, uh, all things are possible uh, to him that believe. Uh, unlimited blessings. Uh, and oh, uh, don't you know a benefit uh, of being on the Lord's side? Uh, he answers uh, your prayer. May not come when you want them to come, but prayer will be answered. Therefore, I said to you, what things whatever you desire, when ye pray, believe that ye will receive them, and ye shall have them. One of the great benefits. 
Thanking you and be on the Lord's side. You can be assured he's a problem solver. He's a mind regulator. He's a heart fixer. He's a restorer of broken relationships. And the Lord said, if he had faith and a grain of mustard seed, he might say to the sycamore tree, be thou plucked up by the roots and be thou planted in the sea and it shall be thou speak the word with faith in God. Trust in the living word. Speak the word. Thank you, Jesus. And by faith, you will go stronger through every trial, every tribulation, every persecution, every broken heart. Yeah, you'll be better on the other side. When you go through it, you come out better. You come out shouting. You come out singing. You come out saying, thank you, Jesus. You brought me this far. Amen, by faith. Thank you, Jesus. And we're all looking, praise God, for a brighter day. I said, we're all looking for a brighter day. For his anger and do it but a moment. In his famous life, we can make do for night. But joy coming in the morning. When that sky breaks, and no man can see it. And the Lord descends in the middle of the air. And those that have died, those that have died, holding on the God's unchanging hand, are caught up to be with the Lord. And those that are alive and remain, yeah, a brighter day. They shall be changed in the moment of a trickle of an eye. That's that brighter day. That's that great hope. Good God Almighty. These are benefits of being in relationship with God. But having the Spirit of God even in your soul. And there's only one way to get it. First, there must be a repentance. That the Lord said to Nicodemus. You must be born again. Isn't that right? Born of water and born of the Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. And when you have the Spirit of God, you'll know you got it. Nobody got to tell you you got it. You'll know that you have it. Because you spoke with tongues and the Spirit and the Spirit and the Spirit gave utterance unto you. You can shout on your own. You can dance on your own. Yeah, because you know you got it. And what you got the world didn't give it to you. And this whole world can't take it away from you. Hold on to your God. Unchanging hand. Brighter days are coming. Not just that day. But brighter days are coming. Through your trials. Through your troubles. Through your tribulations. Brighter days are coming. And we know the love of God. Amen. It is a God that can deliver. Yes, he did. He said, many are the affliction of the righteous. Oh, my Lord. Not some, but many afflictions. Many are the affliction of the righteous. But the Lord. But the Lord. But the Lord. Delivers him out of them all. Not just some of them. But all of them. When you're on the Lord's side. Yet our afflictions, which is but for a moment, they work in the far more and exceeding and eternal weight of glory. God haven't forgotten about you. And then God haven't forgotten about you. He knows who you are. He knows what you're going through. So your reliance on God without trust and conviction will take you through until your change come. I said it will take you through until your change come. Wait on him and be of good courage. Keep your trust in him. 
<laughs> the God Almighty. <laughs> yes, it may be a small unit, <laughs> but fight the good fight. <laughs> it may be a medium unit, <laughs> but fight the good fight. <laughs> God isn't coming back for how many or how large your congregation is. <laughs> He's not coming back to find out how much money you raise. <laughs> but how well you live. <laughs> how well you live. <laughs> By his word. That's what he's looking for. Not how good you can shop, but how good you can endure hard as a good soldier. That's what he's looking for. What you're going through every day. Put it in the hands of the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct. God path. Hallelujah. In your hands, Elder Williams. Hallelujah. God bless you. Praise the Lord Thank once you. again to each and everyone that's in the congregation here. Yes, yes. And the Lord want to remind us what trust is. I mean, uh, faith, what, what faith is. Faith means putting complete trust in the Lord. And just like Job said, it means it mean sometimes you ain't going to be in pain. You ain't going to have to cry sometimes. Sometimes you're going to be in a, in, in a situation where people might talk to you right, ain't, ain't treating you right. But when you got complete trust oh, yeah. in God, and you don't got no doubt, just like what Job said in Job the 13th chapter, oh, yeah. well, well, verse 15, though he slayed yeah, yeah. yet Will I trust yes, will I trust. He said in Job 1 21, God gives. Yeah. And God takes away. Uh -huh. He said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's right. And he said, I'm, and you know, his wife told him to give up. Mm -hmm. His friends told him to give up. But Job told him in Job 14 and 14, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till my change comes. Huh? That's what we got to do. Yeah. You know, Paul asked us an important question, saints. In Romans the 8th chapter, verse 35. Paul said, for who to separate from the love of God, to trials, to tribulation, to persecution, to pain, to nakedness, to peril, to sport. God telling us we got to be persuaded. And it comes, like he said, faith coming from hearing, hearing the word of God. We got to be persuaded. I'm not going to let life, yeah. not death, uh -huh. nor the creature. Because Job looked like death that came on. He got so sick unto the flesh again. And his wife told him because she couldn't see it. Oh, no. Although she wasn't in the physical pain that he was in, but just looking at Job. Well, in Job, the second chapter, verse 9, she said, Job, you're going to continue on your integrity. You know, uh, you, you, you know what you're going through with. She said, curse God and Job. Oh, but Job told her, Job 10 and 10, woman, you sound good. Uh -huh. You don't sound like a wife. I'm going to wait. Uh -huh. the change comes. So this is what we got to do. We got to ask God for the faith to endure hard is a heart of soldier. God want to remind us what happened Absolutely. in Mark the ninth chapter, verse 23. Jesus told our father about his son was sick. He said, All things are possible, no belief. But our father said, Lord, I believe. But he realized he was weak. He wasn't what his faith should be. He said, Lord, yeah. 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 So what God want to tell us this morning yeah. in James 4 and 2, we have not because we ask not. Uh -huh. week week. So whatever we like it, let us ask God. Yeah. If we ain't got the wisdom like he said in James 1 and 5, well, and every brother, everyone like the wisdom, let us ask God who gives liberty to call him. So come now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Because like Proverbs 27 and 1 say, boast not ourselves for tomorrow. We want to go through. But come now. Come like now. Isaiah 118 say, and reason with Jesus. Though our sins be as gone, he's going to make a white stone. Do it be red like crimson, he's going to make a white wood. But we got to be like Bishop said in 1 Corinthians 15 and 15. Lord, help me to be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abiding word in that nutshell of the Lord. I shall not, I shall not be moved, saints. I shall not, I shall not be moved just like a tree. 
Let it by the water. I shall not be moved. Jesus is my keeper. And I shall not be moved. For Jesus is my keeper. And I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord once again. Amen. We thank you.
praise God for the word of God, relying on God with absolute Amen. Trust in God. Amen. We got to absolutely trust him. Amen. Hallelujah Amen. in Jesus' name. We thank and praise God for the word and thank God for our pastor being back in the, being back in the saddle. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. He's been out for a couple of months. Amen. So we thank and praise God for all of our Facebook audience this, this afternoon. Amen. Mother Patricia Wright. Amen. Sister Diane Garrett. Amen. Uh, Elder Manny Adams. Amen. A Germany friend of ours. Amen. And for missionary Stephanie Hammonds. Amen. Hallelujah. And we want to say, um, God bless you all. Amen. And tell Mother Hammond, we said, God bless us, Stephanie, in Jesus' name. So those are all that I could see this morning in Jesus' name. So you all continue to pray for us as we pray for you. God bless you. Back into the hands of our sister pastor, Eleanor. Amen. Amen. As closing, we want to make sure we thank God Almighty and we saw Christ Lord for his precious grace. His precious mercy, love, and blood that brought us what we have today. And by that, we are all making to heaven by his grace, mercy, love, and blood. So we want to thank him. We want to thank the Facebook audience who tuned in with us today. And hope you know that God will hide his way one of our heart. And we're going to sing this out. Oh, he's coming soon. Christ Jesus coming soon. And with joy we'll welcome his return. Oh, it may be done. It may be night or noon, but I know he's coming soon. Christ Jesus coming soon. Christ Jesus coming soon. And with joy we'll welcome his return. Until 